I'm at Fox Pike Farm in Lawrence, South Carolina with Schroeder and Reed Edwards. And Reed, you have a horse school here when horses have, and their owners have some difficulties, these horses come and stay with you. They do. Uh, so they'll typically come in one month segments. Uh, and then that, the length of time really depends on what the issue is that the owner and the horse are having, how deep it is, and then how far the owner wants to go with their own education. Um, so the sky is kind of the limit as far as what we can do with them. But, um, you know, work with the horse to change the behavior, teach the owner and the rider what they need to do to keep that from recurring. And, you know, the, the difficulty in that relationship is we're dealing with a prey animal, we're predators, and they are much larger than we are. So. And we can't force ourselves on a horse. It's a lot bigger than we are. So how do we come to some level of understanding and cooperation? So horses operate, the, the horse that's dominant in a, a herd situation is the one who can move the other's feet. Oh. And so moving their feet requires them to work. So if we can move their feet and then we can direct that, uh, and then when we reward their behavior, so when we get a desired response for us that we back off on pushing on them, uh, then we can get the, uh, the response that we want while the horse maintains his self-preservation and his calmness and his security. Horses use body language, you've told me, and we tend to be verbal. So do you encourage and do you use, try to use body language with the horses? Yes, uh, that is primarily what I do. And I use very little voice cues, really just because in my case, if, if you were to use a certain word like stop or whoa, I want the horse, if I use that as a cue, I want it to work 100% of the time. That means I can't say stop in conversation. So, you know, if, if we were riding along here going down the trail, and you know, did you see the new stoplight that they put up in town? Well, my horse should come to a screeching halt if I have used that as a voice cue. Well, in that case, I don't want them to stop. So also I can make my cues much more subtle and invisible to the eye of someone watching using my body or a, a physical cue where anybody can hear the fact that I just said stop or what. Give me an example of the way you would use your body to communicate to the horse. So if I'm wanting to move them, then I will, the horse, their drive is primarily from behind. Um, you know, they do use all four feet, but the, the real strength is driven from behind. Um, so I will point my body to their hindquarters or actually behind their hindquarters so that I'm pushing them from behind. Um, and that's one of the key things because when we work with either a halter with a lead rope or a bridle and a rein, the rein brings our body subconsciously to where we're in front of the head or pointing our body towards the head. That stops the horse. So then you're kind of pushing them, but you're pushing them through a wall. Um, so if we can just go behind them and push and leave the door open in front that, okay, I need to, you know, the horse thinks I need to go there and the door's open, I can go, then they can do that. Whereas if the door's closed and you're pushing and you're pushing into a door, then you start to get a little bit of either fear or attitude uh, because you're constrained, you're not, you're pushing and you're saying, go, but stop, go, but stop. Um, these horses like to be with other horses because they're herd animals. They do. And one of the problems is sometimes they don't like to leave the pasture or the barn. Right. And that's probably the issue that I spend more time working on than any single, uh, issue. And if we think about it, most folks are using their horses for recreational purposes. You know, it's a, it's a hobby. It's a thing to do in the evening after work on the weekends. So you're not spending very much time with them at all. Uh, so time-wise, they spend much more time with, you know, their herd that they live with. Um, and one of the common problems is someone goes out for a ride, the horse wants to run back to the barn or run back to the pasture. But what often happens is when they get back, even though that was not desired behavior, the owner gets off, they take the saddle off, they rub the horse down, give him a bite of food, turn him out, all of which are, rewards for the horse. He got treats even he got though he has been a bad boy. for misbehaving. Um, so, and so we rewarded that. So guess what happens next time you come out to ride? He runs back faster or he turns around quicker to do that. Um, so one of the ways I work on that is that we come back to the barn, but then we don't stop. That's when work begins. You know, the ride out and back was, that was just kind of 
warm up our pleasantries. And then we get to work, and so we work really hard there at the area that the horse wants to go, and then we'll ride out a little bit, and that's where we'll stop. So that we stop, you know, and give him a reward at a different place, changing that thinking of where is it that I want to go. Um, and so the, the least amount of work that the horse has to do is when, if he'll do what I ask. Um, life will be good because we won't have to work real hard to do that. We may still have to work, but it'll be a lot easier. If he has a different idea, we can go there, but we'll have to work really hard. Reed, I want to thank you for um, explaining how you've taken human psychology and horse psychology and tried to get the two to work together for a common goal. Now I think you need to figure out how we can use these tricks so that we can get our children to listen to us too. That, uh, some of it certainly helps. Uh, the horses are definitely the easier side of, of the equation there. So, uh, you know, the, the humans can be a challenge. Um, if people want to know more about your work with horses here at Fox Putt Farm, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Uh, probably either phone or email. So my phone number is 864-871-2575 uh, or by email reed e r e e d e at foxpipefarm.com. And there is a reason for this being called Fox Pipe Farm. You want it to tell is. us that? Uh, I've got a, there's a drainage pipe halfway down the driveway and I've had three litters of baby foxes born in that uh, over the years. And it's a lot of fun watching them uh, frolic and play when they're there in the spring. That's kind of fun. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Thanks for coming.